Hey everyone, uh, this is my second video, so mind the crappy quality. I uh, just wanted to do a little update on what I've been doing. Um, some people asked about what I'm doing to my AZ. I can never say it. AZ GTI. Um, I shouldn't call it the Astro Mount. Whatever. Um, so here I have it open. Um, I've tapped out these screw holes here. They're, I think they're like 2.8 millimeters. Ideally, you want like a 2.5 millimeter hole for tapping in 3 millimeter thread, but um, it, it has enough room. I mean, it, it, it seems to hold. Worst case scenario, these little screws, uh, screw holes strip out, and uh, you just got to put a, like a lock washer, a uh, lock nut in the back. <clears throat> Um, little tiny screws hold it in there with the original mount. Just um, they just go through there into these little holes, and just kind of hold it there. So here is the original cover. Oh, well, can't get it on there with that, can we? Um, uh, here's my, you know, my my counterweight rod uh, adapter that I put on there. I go over that in another video. Or if you have any questions about that, just just let me know. But here's the original. The plastic, uh, I mean, I'm the, like material sciences person. Now let me turn off the dehumidifier. Who's saying? Oh, I'm no like, you know, material sciences person. But this plastic feels pretty brittle. Um, it probably cracked pretty easy. It might bend. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's very bendy. I think it would just shatter. Anyway. No big deal. Uh, but huge waste of space, right? Like, if you're not using the battery pack, you've got this huge void here. Um, yeah, it covers everything. And it has the uh, outputs nice and labeled and uh, I guess some numbers that mean something. But um, otherwise, big, big giant thing that you really can't do much with. I mean, you could drill into it and stuff, but like I said, it'd probably break if you wanted to, like, put some ports over here or something like that. So, um... Yeah, I decided just to take that off and set it aside. This is a little cable that goes in there. And there's another cable. Oh, this goes into this board. I don't know, there's a little cable around here somewhere. Part of the messy desk. I clean it up and then it just gets like this every time I you do something. You need some wire, you bring it over here, you need that, you need some cut, uh, you know, water. Um, stuff just gets everywhere. Um, let's see here. So, I just decided to get rid of that cover. Um, I did some probing on this to determine what connections are going here. There's two powers, one for the LED, the serial port for this, um, something else, I forget what. There's one pin on there, I didn't know what it did. I must go to this hand controller. Uh, anyway, I decided to, uh, get rid of this too, because I don't really need that either, because I'm not using the hand controller port. Uh, power port I can do myself. The trigger port I can do myself, that just connects to this. Um, I just have to map what contacts go to what in there, and then we'll have that. I might use the LED, not sure. Um, I would just put a new one in. The resistor doesn't seem to be on this board, so it's probably in there, and in which case I can just probably slap any red LED, or any LED really, uh, on there and it'll light up. Um, so this is a pretty tricky geometry. Um, it starts kind of flat here, but then it... The printer just did something weird. Um, it kind of does this weird curve. This curve is different from this curve inside. And there's actually three different radiuses of uh, circles here. There's one, two, and then three. Um, so it's pretty tricky. So I just kind of like... Um, you know, like fired off into the dark. Oops. Oh, well, there goes one. And um, just made a bunch of test prints that kind of fit in there. And I just changed them slightly, you know, based on, you know, how it fit, how it looked, until I got it um, perfectly, you know, like, uh, here's an example. No, oh, that doesn't even fit in there, does it? I have no idea what this is. Let's go like this. Oh, okay. So this is must have been when I was trying to figure out this curve here, because this was pretty tricky. This took me a while, this little bit here. This one was pretty quick, and this is this looks 
looks to be pretty flat. I think it's like an illusion that makes it look like it's actually curving down, but I think that that's pretty flat. In my model it is, and the stuff fits, so I'm just going to go with that. Um, but yeah, I just went through like you know, a couple iterations to get that geometry of this curve right so I could match things to it. Only to turn around and go, oh, I'm just going to cover it with something, actually, so it doesn't really matter, but... You know, it's nice to have a nice, accurate model. Um, so then I, you know, I made these other ones, and see, I had to bend it up and cut it where I made mistakes or didn't fit. And uh, I just went through all these pieces. I think this one goes underneath, and that's how I figured out the screw hole distance from that screw hole to this screw hole. Because these screw holes up here actually are slanted. So, like, on the outside, it's all the way towards the edge of the wall. But when you get in here, it's actually, you know, moved, moved over. So it's actually tilted, like, a good 10 degrees. So those were tricky to find out, the, the distance of one. And then you can't really get the calipers in there to measure any of that. So you just have to, you know, make a model, um, slap it in there, see if it works, measure it, change it a little bit, print it again, come check it. So just did that a few times. Um, I, I did that, you know, I did, eventually found out that, you know, the encoder disk is actually sticking out a little right here. So you have to be careful, so I ended up having to, like, bevel these so that the encoder just doesn't uh, impact that as it turns. Hopefully that thing's not damaged. I, I made some sound with it when I did my first, but it looks like it's okay. Let's hope so. Um, so you can see that this is barely has any room to do anything with, really. Um, we're actually very fortunate that we have any room at all in here to, to do any sort of modifications with. And then it's got these weird, you know, it's got right here, it, it's flat, it's flat, it's flat. It comes up this weird curve that's impossible to measure. So I just bypassed that and went right to this, which I could measure. I ended up being like a straight edge and laying it in here and then measuring the distance between the two. And uh, I measured that a, a few times and I ended up, I think I measured it like 10 times and averaged it out. Um, so it was a little different every time. Uh, it's pretty tricky to, to get, um, I actually had to get a uh, girlfriend to hold the ruler for me so I could get pretty accurate measurements. But, anyway, point is, trial and error, maybe 50 times or whatever, ah, it's probably not that many, maybe 30 prints, just, just quick little things, to finally be able to get something to go in here that's usable, and then just kind of like... You know, adding all the other pieces you need, like some screw holes to hold on covers, and a thing to hold, like, a part. Um, you know, some nuts on the side to hold a, a side cover. And, uh, as you can see, I mean, like, really cutting it close as far as, like, being able to do anything in there. Um, it's only, I think, like, one millimeter thick. And, um, here it actually, you know, it's so thin that it can't even print that little ball there. Um, so thank goodness they left us some room to actually put this cover on. Um, this little adapter plate. This should keep everything above all the electronics. As you can see right here, it, it pretty much skims right over top of this um, encoder sensor. And this motor's over here. The wires, they're all there. So what I'm going to end up doing is um, putting this here. And I put little shims in there. You can't really see them. Oh, maybe they're gone now. Oh well, I'll find them. But I printed little, like, one-layer shims that go in here underneath of this just to keep, um, keep the level it, it all, you know, the same height. And I think I'm within, like, 0.2 millimeters, which is a little, I think it's, like, 20 times the angle of the accuracy of my eye polar. So, you know, I mean, it's going to be a little off, maybe. Uh, maybe at some point I can, if I need to, I can shim that, like, perfectly, but... The eye polar on my Skywatcher Adventure was a little off anyway, too. So I mean, I, I think I'm, I think I'll be alright. So there's that, and then I'm gonna. This is just a 3D printed um, like prototype part, but as you can see, I had to trim it here because I messed up because these wires didn't fit where I thought they did. But this will be an aluminum plate that I'll cut out. I'm actually printing the um, the adapter or the the drilling jig and cutting jig for cutting this aluminum plate right now, but this is a stand-in before I go and do that so I didn't waste any metal. 
This will just sit on top here with this four screw holes that we tapped going through. And then the eye puller is going to sit here. And I'm actually going to take the eye puller screws out and put in longer ones so that it's screwed in from the back onto the plate. Um, I forget the thread of those. I think it's like 2-58 or 56. Some some really tiny thread that you can't buy at Ace or something. So you got to order those like special. Um, MacMaster Car had them. But I ended up finding some on Amazon. Oddly enough, just just the right size and everything. So I'm just gonna put the eye puller there. Um, I wanted it to be in the middle here, which is what I struggled with a lot. But the view angle would have seen the guide rod. So if I moved it out a little bit, it would have been right on the edge of everything, which would have been fine. But if the counterweight was here, it would have seen the counterweight. I didn't want any of that happening, so I just decided to have it stick out the side. Um, yep, just in case. So then what I'm going to do is we're going to have the eye puller out there. Power is going to come up into a plug right here. And um, I don't know if I'll ever use a chiller or need anything like that. So I just decided to go like full out. And I have this giant power connector here to bring up a whole bunch of 12 volt um, into this mount. And I think it's going to have like three 12 volt pin uh, outputs. It's going to have a USB splitter on this side. That connects to the iPolar internally. Um, then it's gonna have three more ports coming out for like camera and guider, um, anything else I need. So I, have, I think I have two extra ports for any any other devices I add on here. In addition, I'm gonna have a, a two USB ports that are for power only, and they will power like lens heaters because everything seems to be switching to USB. Um, so you need to, I'd like to just have the USB there just in case, ready to go. Um, and that also will feed into the splitter through like an auxiliary power connector that the board has. And well, actually, I just soldered it on there and took the connector off. But uh, actually, uh, you can see right here, this was on the board. So I just figured out which pins were this is plus and that's minus. And then I just desoldered it and welded, uh, well, soldered some wires on there. And, uh, yeah, we'll be able to inject power up at the mount. That way it's not draining all the way from my tablet and uh, struggling to keep all those things powered, like, four feet away. Uh, so, it works really good on my Skywatcher. Actually, let me get my Skywatcher. Yeah, my Skywatcher. So, in here, you can see I have the same thing going on. It's a USB splitter internal. And then um, I actually have a motor, a focus motor, and a deck motor because I have a deck bracket. Oh, let me get that for you. Yeah, so here's my deck bracket. Um, see, I just put this stepper motor on the side with like a gear and that's a clutch and everything and it, there's the pins. Um, but it's pretty big. I'm actually pretty happy that I'm going to the AZTG, G, AZGTI. Um, it's much smaller uh, and it should be a lot more accurate than this. Uh, I don't. I don't do any. I just do wide field, so I don't need anything like special. But this was a, a, a nice, a game changer for me because um, I hate wires, and um, I just hate having so many wires coming down. I think when I first got all my guiding and heating and everything all set up the first time, it was like twelve wires hanging off that thing, and they got all tangled up, and I just really hated it. So I did this and. Um, Oh, I just took I just took the battery compartment off, um, and I I incorporated everything into this little hat. So these control the deck or the focus motor, depending on what settings you set. I think I have a video on my channel for this, but I really wanted to duplicate this for my AZ GTI, and uh, so I'm incorporating everything into it that I can to reduce wires hanging down and make it easier to set up. So um, just a little update on that. Um, once I get more farther along, I'll uh, I'll add another video. Um, probably say a lot of the same stuff over and over again, but um, yeah, I mean, repetition is uh, key to learning, you know. Uh, so that's all for now. Thanks, guys.